We've looked at several ways of calculating growth in Excel. The basic formula, the growth function, and the chart method. In this video, we're going to look at the least squares method of calculating growth. Set up the spreadsheet as you see here, including your estimated growth in B17. Name the range Goal C Growth. In the first row, enter in the predicted value as the start value, its variance as B2 minus C2, and the variance squared as D2 squared. For the next row, indicate that we should take the cell above and multiply it by 1 plus the goal C growth. Again, in the variance column, enter D3 minus B3, and in the variance, simply equal D3 squared. This row can be copied down through the entire section of the spreadsheet. Highlight all three cells, grab hold of the fill handle, and drag down or double click. Notice that our variances are very high because we have zero for our estimated growth. Before we get started, be sure to sum the variances. Enter a sum at the bottom of the variance column and also enter a sum at the variance squared. This will make sure that if we have positive and negative variances, that they won't cancel each other out, giving us a false impression of a good curve fit. Now go to data, what if analysis, and goal seek. Goal seek needs to know what cell you're trying to change. It needs to know what value you're trying to set it to. And it needs to know which cell it can change in order to get that result. We're trying to set our variance squared to zero. It's unlikely we'll get there. But Excel continues to try different estimated growth values until it finds something that it can't do any better than. In this case, it's about 10%. When GoalSeek finishes, it warns us that it may not have found a solution. 437 is not zero. Nonetheless, our estimate is quite close to the estimates we got from our other methods. Goal C can only handle one changing variable. In our next video, we'll look at Solver, which can handle a large number of changing variables.